Hey everybody, it's Lisa Goldberg here. Hopefully a bunch of you are back joining me today. It's two o'clock, it's the top of the hour. And so welcome to day three, step three, in the change your mind to change your body challenge. And so again, it's step three of my seven step method to lasting weight loss. And I'm Lisa Goldberg, for those of you who may, might just first be tuning in today. And I'm a nutritionist and lifestyle coach. And for over 16 years, I've been helping people lose weight and keep it off by changing their habits, behaviors, and mindset around food and eating. And so that's what my seven step method is all about because here's what I know and here's what I believe. I believe that in order to lose weight and not gain it back again, you have to change the things that got you to gain the weight in the first place. And that's your old habits, your old behaviors, your old mindset, and your old patterns and conditioning around food and eating. And that's why for a lot of people, losing weight is kind of the easy part. If you follow that diet and you stick to it and you exert your willpower as so many people do, but it's keeping it off that most people struggle with. Hey Elsa, great to have you here. Glad you could join us today. Um, <clears throat> so today I'm gonna go over, you should have gotten your email from day three. Again, if you're just joining, if you just joined the challenge, there is a place in the emails where you could go on and find out where you can get the first couple of emails from day one and day two. If for some reason you didn't get those emails, just shoot me an email and I'll make sure that you get them. But just to refresh you guys, day one and step one was about nourish. Nourishing your body, choosing the right foods, when to eat, how much to eat, what to eat, choosing the right foods for your body. And then yesterday, we went over step two, which is creating an awareness of your habits, behaviors, and your mindset around food and eating. Because that's really what it's all about. It's about mindset. It's about how do you think about food? What are your habits? And a habit is something that we do without thinking. And so until you really become aware, you might not even know what you do. You might not even recognize how you walk into the kitchen and pop a few strawberries in your mouth or as you're making dinner, and even if you're making a healthy salad, how many tomatoes or how many of the ingredients go into your mouth because it's just what you do. So a habit is something we do without thinking, and I call those extra pops in our mouth, even if it's only fruits and vegetables, it's just only's. And sometimes it's fruits and vegetables, and sometimes it's M&Ms or pretzels or something like that. And it's, it's, it's those extra bites that add up over the week. And then we often say to ourselves, I don't know, I gained weight or I haven't lost weight, I don't understand. So creating an understanding of your habits and behaviors and your mindset around food and eating is really the beginning part of changing those habits and those behaviors once we really get a good idea of what they are. <clears throat> Excuse me, and today we're gonna go over step three, and that's monitoring the messaging. Monitoring the messaging in your head. Hey Debbie, welcome back, great to have you here. Um, so it's so important to pay attention to what you tell yourself. And what I hear most often when people, especially emotionally eat, is that when they go to eat that food, what they say is, what does it matter? It doesn't matter. And so what I'm gonna ask you right now is, does it really not matter? And the other thing I wanna point out is the it is you. There is no it. So every time you wanna say, the hell with it, I don't care, what does it matter? I need you to ask one, is that the truth? Does it really not matter? Are all of you here joining me today here in this Facebook Live and in the Facebook group because it doesn't matter? So tell yourself the truth when you hear your brain, that old voice in your head saying it doesn't matter. And when, you're he and when you hear yourself referring to it as it, there is no it. The it is you. So you matter and 
that's what you have to remember. And so the mental messaging, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I can't do this. What if I fail? And so paying attention to that. So often when I'm working with clients, they'll tell me, I went into the kitchen, I was all stressed out, and I went into the kitchen, I'm like, well, what were you thinking? What was going on in your head in that moment? What were you telling yourself? And so often I'll hear, I don't know. And that's so important to figure out. And I actually have people keep messaging journals because when you hear that narrative in your head, when you hear that dialogue in your head, that's your old voice. That is the voice, and you heard me say it yesterday, that will bring you down that rabbit hole. So it is so important to hear what you tell yourself. And it's really important to figure out, are you creating reasons? Are you justifying why you should eat? Well, here's what I hear a lot. I was good all week. I was good the last three days. So therefore, I can eat X. I didn't eat this and I didn't eat that, so therefore I can eat X. Or so-and-so is eating that. Well, if they can eat it, I should be able to eat it too. What are you telling yourself to justify why you should eat something? versus giving yourself messaging to justify maybe why you shouldn't eat it. And maybe a better message to justify why you shouldn't eat it is, I want to lose weight. I want to feel better in my body. I don't want to struggle with this anymore. So, hey Sue, I don't even think I just do it. It's hard to identify what the thought is. It's such a habit. Well, exactly. So part of all this and going into the steps is kind of really zoning in and being really super mindful of what is the habit. And so when you find yourself going to the kitchen, there's something leading you there. There's a thought. You're having a thought and your action is following that thought. And so you're thinking something or you're triggered by something, which we'll get into triggers after. But you, you, you're having a thought where you think, I want to eat. And so, you know, so often people feel a sensation in their body if you pay close attention. Or you had a fight with your husband or your spouse or you had a bad day at work, but the one thing you know you're thinking about is what can I eat? Or you're thinking about food. And all of a sudden you recognize the cookies are in the cabinet. And so there's this whole inner conversation that's probably going on with yourself. And as soon as you feel yourself heading towards the kitchen, you need to ask yourself what we talked about yesterday. Am I hungry? And if it's not hunger, what are you thinking? What are you telling yourself? And there's usually a whole conversation going on about whether you should eat or whether you shouldn't eat. But I want it. But what does it matter? But I was good all week. I'll worry about it tomorrow. Or I ate this already this afternoon. So what's the difference if I eat this? And it's all that negative stuff that you keep telling yourself and all of those things, if you heard what I just said, are reasons to justify why you should eat and continue the behavior. Versus saying, well, maybe, yeah, I did eat all of that this afternoon, so therefore, I'm not going to pile it on and eat more now. Or here's what a lot of people can't do. I'm in a bad mood. I feel bad. I'm angry. How about just sitting with those feelings? How about getting comfortable being uncomfortable? So it's really so important that you pay attention to the thoughts in your head. And so even like when Sue says it's such a habit and you don't even think, you don't think you're thinking because you're on automatic pilot. Because as I said earlier, a habit is something you do without thinking. But as in what we talked about yesterday, get super aware of what your habits are. And so if you could develop a routine around your meal times and your snack times. And so a lot of us do, a lot of us have that. A lot of us, you know, we eat breakfast at eight and then maybe we have a snack at 11 because lunch is at one. And if this is, I guess it's easier to be in a routine if you have kids or if you're working. Um, but figure out what your routine is and then start to notice if you get hungry or you feel like eating at other times during that routine and then ask yourself, am I hungry? And did some, or did something just happen? When you're trying to make yourself eat or just trying to tell yourself you feel like eating. And so it's so important 
that you get really clear on what you're telling yourself. Because I know that logical voice might be saying, do you really want to eat? And that old voice in your head that you're used to listening to will tell you, but I want it, but it doesn't matter, but I was good, I'll worry about it tomorrow, and then all of those things that keep you in the loop and repeating the cycle. And so that's what needs to change, your self-talk. And in addition to your self-talk, making yourself a priority, making your choices and what you do for you a priority. And so let me ask you guys, for those of you who are tuned in, do you know what you tell yourself? Do, 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 are you aware of some of the messaging in your head that when you want to emotionally eat, what do you say to yourself? Did any of what I just say resonate with you for the messages that you get? I mean, so often people are just like, you know, I'm so stressed out, I need this. I want this. It'll make me feel better. And so you tell yourself it'll make you feel better or you tell yourself I deserve it. But what do you really deserve? Is it food that you deserve? So if what you really want is to lose weight, or if you've lost weight, if what you really want is to maintain your weight, is that a good trade-off? Is food a good trade-off for feeling like you deserve a reward for something? Think about it. You're trading in everything that you want for yourself, either to lose weight, or if you've worked so hard to already lose the weight, are you really willing to trade that in for a few cookies or some popcorn or something, some kind of food that you think is going to make you feel better but will ultimately make you feel worse? Because you've been down that road before. You know what the outcome is going to be. So let's change the conversation. Let's change the conversation in your head and figure out reasons why you shouldn't eat. What is the benefit if I do? And what is the benefit if I don't? So it's all about the messaging that you give yourself. So does anybody, for, the, for those of you guys that are here and tuned in, what messaging do you give yourself that keeps you kind of perpetuating the loop? Okay, so... You know, here's, here's what I'm going to say. If, if nobody, you know, if maybe everything that I've said kind of really resonated with everybody and, um, you know, there, there's nothing else that anybody wants to continue. Kathy here, I say, it tasted so good, I'll have a second. Okay, great, Kathy. So here's the thing. So nothing tastes as good as that first bite. And I use it to treat myself. Okay, so let's go back to nothing. I, I, I'll, have, I'll have a second. The truth is nothing tastes as good as the first bite. And if you're sitting down, so if you decide to treat yourself, if you've made a mindful decision to eat this food, I want you to sit down, I want you to take a plate, I want you to take a bite, I want you to taste it, savor it, smell it, enjoy it. Um, and really, because we eat chocolate cake or something like that for pleasure, get the pleasure. If you're emotionally eating, and something tasted good and you want a second, you're still not getting the pleasure from it. You're still trying to feed that feeling. And so, Kathy, when you're taking that first one and you think, I'll have a second, maybe make that next sentence in your head, I'll have the second one tomorrow or in two days from now, where I'll really enjoy it again when I want it because I've already had some. And so, Sharon, hi, it's only one, so how bad can it be? That's the voice saying, it's just only. Here's a news flash for you guys. When you hear yourself saying, it's just only, and I'm dating myself, but if, if any of you guys are old enough to remember Lost in Space, you know, the robot Danger Roll Robinson, Danger Roll Robinson, that is a red alert that you are justifying why you should eat something when you're not hungry. Because those little bites, those it's just onlys, if you add up those little bites over the course of the week, it'll be several hundred calories. And if you wonder why you're being so good on your diet, but you haven't lost any weight or you've gained weight, and you're, it's just only throughout the week, that's exactly why. 
So when you hear your brain say, well, it's just stone lane, two pretzels, a handful of M&Ms, a handful of strawberries, whatever it is, it's mindless eating, it's justifying why you should eat, and it's usually the little stuff like that that derails you. So the first question, and I'll say this ad nauseum throughout the rest of the week, am I hungry? If it's not, if you're not hungry, it doesn't matter how much or how, or how little you're taking. It's extra calories your body doesn't need, and it's food you're not hungry for. So, and to treat yourself, again, I said it a little bit earlier, is food something you really want to treat yourself with? If you do something really great or if you're having a bad day, what else can you do? You know, so food is easy, it's accessible. And sometimes people just don't want to spend money. You know, so I would say, go get your nails done. Go get a 10, 15 minute massage. Go get a haircut, go buy a new lipstick. Go do something that's gonna be really longer lasting, that's going to give you the pleasure and is gonna be a reward that isn't food because chances are if you're rewarding yourself with food, you're just going to be so upset with yourself after you've eaten it. And what kind of a reward is that? Something that could potentially make you gain weight or make you or prevent you from losing weight? What kind of a reward is that? I worked with a client once. She did exceptionally well. I mean, she came to me. She was in her early 50s. She was hitting all the perimenopausal stuff. She was struggling with her weight. She you know, heard the food calling her from the refrigerator and we started working together. And as we started working together, she started like running stairs and she started doing these races. So she incorporated fitness into her life. And after one of her races, she rewarded herself by going out to dinner and eating a hamburger and fries. And of course, she wasn't so happy after all that hard work and training that she rewarded herself with a hamburger and fries because she didn't feel so good with her decision or afterwards. And so the next time she ran that race, she ran out and she bought herself a new wallet. And every time she took that wallet out of her purse, she remembered what she was rewarding herself for, for doing all of that hard work to run that race. And so, yeah, so food is so instantly available, but it's not a reward. It's just not. And so the, the sooner we get that, out of our lives and out of our habit and out of our mindset because you know I said it yesterday and I'll say it again puppies get rewarded with food not people because I know we're conditioned when we're little kids did great on your test you know you 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 you, you learned to ride your bike today let's go out and get ice cream or you know you finished your dinner so now you can have dessert and we think that you know food is a reward and that's where the good and bad comes in that's the stuff that we have to get rid of. And honestly, if you've got kids, that's the stuff that you don't want to start conditioning your kids about to reward them with food. Buy them a coloring book. Give them some stickers. You know, praise them. Tell them how amazing they are and there's nothing that they can't do and how smart they are. Praise them. Make them feel good about their self-esteem and their self-worth. Don't equate their self-worth to being rewarded with food when they've done something great. And so that's where so much of our conditioning comes in. And so even though food is accessible, it's not a reward because if you're here because you want to lose weight, if you're here because you've been on a million diets and you've lost only to regain the weight or you're emotionally eating, there's nothing good about rewarding yourself with food. There's just, there's just not. And so what I really want you to focus on today and what today's challenge is, and I have it here, write down what you are telling yourself. Because the more clear you become on the messages that you're giving yourself and that old narrative that goes on and on in your head, the easier it will be able for you to change that messaging. It just will. And you'll see the pattern. You'll see what you tell yourself. You'll see why you keep repeating the patterns that you really want to change. Because once you change that pattern, once you change the way you think, once you change what you tell yourself, once you start saying, I can versus I can't, once you start justifying 
why you shouldn't eat that food versus why you should eat that food, and you start doing it over and over again, that will start to change for you. Your messaging will start to change. And here's what I know, you can change your brain without getting too technical. Some of you may or may not heard if you follow some of this stuff, that there's something called neuroplasticity of the brain and you can change the way your brain thinks. But you can't do it just a little bit. You have to do it continuously. And so here's what I know. When you start doing it around food and eating, you'll be able to do it around other aspects of your life. And so, you know, whether it's around, you know, accomplishing a sport or doing something else, you have to keep changing your language and telling yourself something different because what will start to happen is you'll feel better once you make a positive change. So let's just say, rather than telling yourself, it's, it tastes so good, I'm gonna have a second. If you were to tell yourself, it tastes so good, but you know what? I'm gonna stop right there. That was so delicious, and I'm not gonna have right more right now. There was, there was my self-indulgent, good for me, and I'm gonna stop. You will be so happy with the decision that you stopped and that'll make you feel good. So not only did you have a little bit, maybe you felt good because, you know, when we eat sugary foods or something, a cookie or two, it's, you know, that we eat that food for pleasure. So not only will you get the pleasure from the food, you will get the pleasure from making a really good decision and choosing you over having a second piece of cake. And so the outcome of that decision is that you feel good you'll be pleased and proud of yourself. And then it'll help reinforce to help you do it again because you have to stay connected to the outcome. So Sue, today I used your how will I feel after eating that and that stopped me buying chocolate on my way home as I thought about how bad I would feel afterwards. You are right. I really feel good for, for not buying it. Excellent, excellent. Congratulations, I am so glad to hear that. You change, you change the messaging in your head. And most important, you recognize what you were telling yourself. You were telling yourself, I'm going to go out and buy the chocolate. And then that logical voice, you actually listened to it. It said, I'm not going to feel good about that decision. And so excellent that you actually followed through on justifying why you shouldn't. And you feel good. And use that to reinforce it. So Elsa. What about the cravings set up by having any sugar and flour at all? So, as you know, sugar begets sugar. Once you have sugar, you want more. So, um, here's, here's what I know. I mean, the truth is, if, if, you are, if you're a big sugar eater, the better thing to do is get it out of your diet. I mean, because, or reduce it, reduce it, reduce it. Look where the sugars are in your foods. And that's why you want to eat whole and processed foods. And I will tell you this. When you eat whole and processed foods and you have a new, uh, I, don't, I hate calling it a diet, but I guess that's the only terminology. If you have a diet where you're eating whole and processed foods, um, you know, more often than not, so you're doing 80, 20, or 90, 10, you, your body gets used to that food. Your taste buds will change to the point where foods will become too sweet and they won't taste good. But, you know, about setting up the cravings you do. So really what you want to do is my one of my greatest tools for curing that at least you know in the minute is Listerine strips anything you put in your mouth after having a Listerine strip won't taste good and it gives you the minute to pause so you know Elsa so what if, if you're setting yourself up for sugar cravings pay but still pay attention to what goes on in your head because at the end of the day it's still a choice there's still that messaging in your head so if you have some sugar and then you want more sugar, you still have a choice to keep going. You have a choice to take a Listerine strip. You have a choice to leave the room. You have a choice to go distract your brain and do some kind of behavior interrupt because once your brain is distracted, it'll stop thinking about the sugar. It'll stop thinking about the food. So, you know, what, what I'd say first, the best way to get rid of sugar cravings is to get rid of or reduce your sugar because as you start to reduce your sugar those cravings will become less and they do if you you can read a million studies where they compare sugar to cocaine it just makes you want more and more and that's what sugar does 
So what I would do is I would also start to look at the foods you're eating. There's a lot of especially processed foods that have added sugars. And so it just rings your bell. If you're using artificial sweeteners, the truth is artificial sweeteners make you want more sugar. So get rid of those things as well. So the more natural. So what I tell people when I work with clients is you want foods that come from plants, not that are made in a plant. So look in the ingredients. If there's five or more ingredients on a food label, you probably don't want to eat it. And so get your sugar, get your sweetness from natural fruits. And so some are sweeter than others. And so, but if you pair that fruit with a little bit of protein, it'll cut down on that craving. So anybody else have something they want to add or did something, did somebody, you know, use one of the tools that we talked about yesterday, like Sue did, where she actually stopped herself from eating chocolate because she had that positive conversation with herself. She actually, she connected to the outcome and she recognized that that choice would make her feel bad longer than it would make her feel good. So, hi Deborah, I think you joined. So, hi Kathy, food plan, not diet works for me. Exactly. So, you want to think about how do you feed yourself nutritionally? How do you eat in the life that you live? It, you want it to be just what you do. You want to establish a way of eating where it's the way you eat more often than not. And so, and then there's those times where maybe you'll decide to have an indulgence, whether it's pizza or a burger or fries, or you know, there's a celebration and you want some cake because it's somebody's birthday, but you have your 80 to 90% way of eating, and then you have that 10 to 20% room to live. And so, as you may have heard me say yesterday, and if you are somebody that works with me, how much and how often in seven days? If you pay attention to how much and how often, so if in those seven days you eat well most of the time, you can eat a little crappy some of the time and still lose weight or not gain weight. So that's how you live without being restricted. That's how you live out of the dieter's mentality. That's how you get rid of the black and white all or nothing thinking. That's how you get rid of good foods and bad foods. That's how you get rid of the I'm bad or I'm good. And so many times I hear people say, well, when I'm being good, here's what I do. And when I'm bad, I'm bad. What if you just were? And what if once in a while you just chose to eat something that isn't in your regular way of eating just because you felt like it, not because you had a feeling? So, you know, even me as a nutritionist, I'll go out and I'll have a burger and fries. I might tell them to hold the bun, but if I want it, I'll eat it. Is it something that I eat most days of the week? No, it's not, but there's nothing I don't eat if I want it because I eat well most of the time. So if I go out with my friends and I have some wine or I go out with my friends and I have, you know, a steak and, you know, we, you know, we go and we have like a, you know, a quote unquote, you know, elaborate dinner or whatever the case may be, it's not going to make me gain weight. It's not going to affect my weight. I'm not going to let it upset me because I've got my other six days in the week where I'm eating well, or maybe there's five days in the week where I'm eating well. I'm doing some, you know, a little bit of exercise, whether I'm getting to the gym or whether I'm taking a walk outside or whether I make it a point, you know, to take the stairs versus the elevator. So whatever it is, the important thing to remember is changing what you say to yourself. Because here's what I know, your actions follow your thoughts. And so focus on what you're thinking especially for those of you guys that justify why you should eat and also for those of you guys that eat and then berate or beat yourself up it's really important to be kind to yourself if you overindulge earlier in the day and you're not happy with your choice you have the rest of the day to eat healthier and leaner or if it's at night there's always tomorrow you have another opportunity to show up and do it better. So don't beat yourself up, don't put yourself down, be kind and loving to yourself and tell yourself I forgive myself and monitor your messaging. The challenge for today is write down what you tell yourself and if I were you guys, if, 
if you know you're somebody who has like all these negative thoughts and you justify and you create all of these reasons why you should eat, well then, write down what you tell yourself and start to see your pattern, start to see your messaging and change it. For every negative thing you say, remember, you want to choose you over the food. And so, before we sign off for today, does anybody have anything else that they want to ask me? Does anybody have anything that they want to share? Does anybody, did anybody discover anything between, you know, day one and day two that they want to share with everybody or ask me about, whether it's on nourish, creating habit and behavior changes, or moderate, monitoring your messaging? Okay. All right, so great. So hopefully you, you guys are taking really good notes. This video will be uploaded to the Facebook group. Share in the group, because I will tell you this, that what one person is struggling with, if you're here, a lot of other people are struggling with the same thing, so share. Let me help you. And sometimes, you know, I was just saying to somebody earlier that we all don't take our own good advice. So you might be able to give somebody else who's struggling really good advice, so you might not take your own good advice for yourself. So I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Time for the day four of the Change Your Mind to Change Your Body Challenge, where we'll go through step four of my seven-step method to lasting weight loss. So thumbs up to you guys. Thanks so much for being here, and everybody have a great day. All right, I'll see you soon.